Thanks to Intego for sponsoring this video. There's a ton from WWDC 2020 and all this new software that's getting a ton of attention and for good reason. There's some really cool stuff to get excited about. But there's one that I think is kind of on the back burner, macOS Big Sur. But I think this might be the most important update. Well, maybe. If you like a Big Sur, I'm not the first one to point this out, it definitely looks like it has some touch inspiration there. I mean, if you run it on an iPad, it, it feels right at home. And this is something that I have been loving doing since this beta came out. So I'm using a little device called Luna Display. You plug it into your USB-C port on your Mac, and then you run the app on your iPad, and you can use it as an external display. But what's great is that you can use it as your only display if you want. So basically, this iPad Pro is now a Mac. It works with the Magic Keyboard for the most part. You can use it as a touchscreen, like everything you would hope for from a Mac with a touchscreen is here, and it's awesome. It works really well. It's everything that I have been wanting. And there's been, of course, some that say they want macOS to just run on the iPad. Since Big Sur and macOS now runs on Apple Silicon, namely the A12Z, which we have in the current iPad Pro, there's really no reason why it couldn't work on the iPad Pro, especially in a future iteration. Now it's really just Apple deciding that these are two different products, even though if you look at them on a feature by feature basis, they're basically the same at this point, besides the touchscreen. And if you look at what iPadOS 14 brought us, honestly, kind of the same story as macOS Big Sur, not that much. It wasn't the update a lot of us were hoping for. So it seems, at least right now, that Apple is happy with where the iPad Pro is and where the Mac is headed. And for someone like me who loves both these products, it was a little disappointing, but I'm getting more excited because of that Apple Silicon. I mean, think about it. Why do I and many people love the iPad Pro? It's because of that Apple Silicon and what that brings. Better battery life, better performance, a smaller form factor. Those are all things that are better on an iPad compared to a Mac. But since Apple Silicon is coming, in theory, those benefits could come to the Mac plus the benefits the Mac already has. So we could get a really lightweight, great battery life, really powerful MacBook or MacBook Pro that runs all the Pro apps we're used to. It runs Mac OS. It does everything we're used to without having to compromise and kind of downscale to an iPad Pro, which a lot of us are doing right now. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. You get the power of Mac OS Big Sur, which has all the apps that you want, but you will eventually get the portability and the design and the power of Apple Silicon that we get in the current iPhone and iPad Pro. Plus, there are other benefits that maybe we just haven't even thought of. We know that now macOS Big Sur with Apple Silicon computers will be able to run iOS apps alongside the macOS apps, which, I mean, there you go. There's your unified ecosystem, essentially. And that could mean a few things. Maybe those apps will get more powerful because the developer will see that people are using it on the Mac a lot and really beef up that app to do even more. And that could translate down to the iPad Pro. Or maybe now with Catalyst and those unified apps, the communication between devices will be even better. You have an app on your iPhone that works pretty well and similarly on your iPad, but you know gives you more features because it's a bigger screen. Well, that relationship doesn't work quite as well when going to the Mac. But now you could, in theory, have an excellent full desktop experience on the Mac and then have a little bit more of a stripped down version on your iPad and an even more stripped down version on your iPhone, depending on the screen size and the power of the device that you're using. I mean, that essentially is the unified operating system that a lot of us have been hoping for, but maybe the operating systems don't have to merge at all. If the back end is all working on the same architecture and the apps can run on everything, then what's, what's the difference at that point? So Macs used to be known as the safe, virus-free platform. But these days, I mean, no matter what you're using, you're vulnerable to an attack. But that is where Intego Premium Bundle X9 comes in. Intego has been making security and utility software for Apple since 1997. Virus Barrier X9 can protect you against new spyware and malware threats from downloads and links. Net Barrier X9 is an upgraded firewall that protects both incoming and outgoing traffic, so the apps you have installed can't talk to the internet without your permission. That, in combination with Content Barrier X9, means you can fully protect yourself from from unknown internet traffic. Content barrier lets parents set limits on what can be accessed on the internet. 
And besides protection from internet threats, Intego also helps protect your data with personal backup 10.9. This is a backup solution for your Mac. You can schedule when your Mac backs up, you can create bootable backups so you can get access to your lost files whenever you need. And if your Mac is running a bit sluggish, Mac Washing Machine X9 can help you delete apps and junk that honestly you have probably forgotten about at this point. Plus, it can make sure you have space for updates that are crucial for your security. Intego is also compatible with macOS Catalina and Big Sur, so you'll be ready when the new software comes out. If this is something you want to try, check out the link down in the description and you can get 50% off. So by now, I'm sure you've seen everything Big Sur has to offer. And honestly, there's really not that much, like from a feature standpoint, there's really not that much new here, except for probably the biggest thing, which is the new design. It's a complete redesign, which we haven't seen in a really long time. But everything you could do before, you can still do now. It just looks different. But that's still a pretty big change. It definitely has a more iOS, iPadOS look to it. The icons are, of course, redesigned, and those are... Uh, I'll just leave those there, those are questionable. But the transparency of the menu bar, the new dock design, the window design, everything is much more unified and you'll see that come into play later. Personally, I love this look. Not only do I want all my devices to you know, look like they are related because they obviously are, but I happen to be one that likes that clean, minimal look. And since they didn't really take any functionality away, they just changed the way it looks, I'm okay with it. Now you do get some new features, of course. So you have the new control center so you can control a bunch of your settings and you can customize it, which is kind of nice something you couldn't do before. The notification center, which personally I have never used on my Mac in its current iteration, now has the new updated widgets. I, I don't know how much more I'm gonna be using them since I didn't use them in the past, but let us know if that's something you're excited for. Finally, we get a new messages app that is the same as what you get on iOS and iPadOS, so you have that feature parity. And then another one that is huge that I haven't really noticed in practice at least is the Safari updates. So you have a new tab design, it's faster, you get better extensions, it's more secure, like all, all good things not that big of a user facing upgrade. But I think those features are really why Big Sur isn't getting that much attention because honestly, it's kind of boring. There just isn't a huge difference feature wise from what we see in Catalina. But soon we will have Apple Silicon Max. And I think that's where this is gonna be a big deal. So even though Big Sur is at this point before we have any of these Apple Silicon Macs, it's a little lackluster. I think it really is setting a stage for what we're gonna see in the future. Yeah, it has a new coat of paint that you might like or you might hate, but what that new coat of paint means is, is getting me really excited. The future of the Mac is finally exciting again. And for the first time in a long time, I mean, the possibilities are really endless.